This is CPX number 110, The Gifts of the Holy Ghost. This is the Catechism of Pope St. Pius X, CPX, page 147 to 148, question and answer number 1 through 9. God give you his peace and omni pace, sufidi, spiritu santi, amen. Heavenly King, Consoler Spirit, Spirit of Truth, who art present everywhere and filling all things, treasure of all good and source of all life, come dwell in us, cleanse us and save us, you who are all good, amen. In omni pace, sufidi, spiritu santi, amen. Number one, name the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. Answer, the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Number two, what purpose do these gifts serve? Answer, the gifts of the Holy Ghost serve to establish us in faith, hope, and charity, and to render us prompt in the exercise of those acts of virtue necessary towards attaining the perfection of a Christian life. Number three, what is wisdom? Answer, wisdom is a gift by which the mind is lifted up from earthly and transitory things, enabling us to contemplate things eternal, that is to say, God himself, the eternal truth, and to relish and love him in which consists all our good. Number four, what is understanding? Answer, understanding is a gift which facilitates, as far as this is possible to mortal man, the understanding of the truths of faith and of the mysteries of God, which we were unable to know by the natural light of the intellect. Number five, what is counsel? Answer, counsel is a gift by which, amidst the doubts and uncertainties of human life, we are enabled to recognize those things that redound more to God's glory, to our own salvation, and to that of our neighbor. Number six, what is fortitude? Answer, fortitude is a gift which inspires us with valor and courage to observe faithfully the holy law of God and of the church by conquering all obstacles and all the assaults of our enemies. Number seven, what is knowledge? Answer, knowledge is a gift enabling us to estimate created things at their proper worth and to learn how to use them rightly and to direct them to our last end, which is God. Number eight, what is piety? Answer, piety is a gift enabling us to venerate and love God and his saints and to preserve a pious and benevolent mind towards our neighbor for the love of God. Number nine, what is the fear of the Lord? Answer, the fear of the Lord is a gift which makes us respect God and fear to offend his divine majesty and which detaches us from evil while inciting us to good. Thus are the words of the Holy Pope. I did make a lot of amazing discoveries in seminary, but one of the ones that I made that I thought was pretty cool as I look back and I put in my Evernote is I found out that the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost line up with the Beatitudes, which also line up with the seven dolors of Mary, the seven sorrows of Mary. And I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to give you an explanation why afterwards. So feel free to turn this off after I just tell you how these line up. I'm actually going to put this in the show notes so you can see this, maybe bring your kids to pray the seven sorrows of Mary rosary later. But I found that we can meditate not just on the seven sorrows of Mary, the seven saddest times of her life, but that she perfectly fulfills the Beatitudes and, of course, was on the threshold of the infinite of the gifts of the Holy Ghost when we look at her life. Um, so I'm just going to read these to you, how I found these line up. You can find these in the show notes if you want to uh, copy and paste them to your own Evernote or whatever note, note app you use. So the first is the prophecy of Simeon. I found out this lines up with fear of the Lord. And it tackles covetousness. I'm actually going to include the sin that we have. Mary, of course, didn't have these, but it's what we have in our own lives and how I found that these kind of line up with that too. And the beatitude that lines up with is, Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So again, prophecy of Simeon lines up with fear of the Lord. I'll tell you a little bit later why I believe that. Number two, the second sorrow of Mary is the flight to Egypt. This lines up with piety. It tackles gluttony in our lives. And I think this lines up with, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Number three, the loss of the child Jesus in the temple. This lines up with the Holy Ghost gift of knowledge. It overturns our concupiscence towards envy. And this lines up with the beatitude, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The fourth sorrow of Mary is Mary meets Jesus on the way to Calvary. This lines up with the Holy Ghost gift of fortitude. It is supposed to overturn sloth in our life. 
and the beatitude it lines up with is, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The fifth sorrow of Mary is the crucifixion. This lines up with counsel, overturns pride. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Number six, the death of Jesus or the piercing of his sacred heart. This lines up with the Holy Ghost gift of understanding. It overturns lust. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the seventh sorrow of Mary is the burial of Jesus. This lines up with wisdom. It overturns our concupiscence towards anger. And blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Okay, and keep listening if you want to go a little deeper into all those. First is the prophecy of Simeon. As I said, this lines up with fear of the Lord, overturns covetousness, also lines up with blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The Pope told us today that the fear of the Lord is a gift which makes us respect God and fear to offend his divine majesty and which detaches us from evil while inciting us to do good. Okay, why did I put this one in the prophecy of Simeon? Well, Simeon prophesying to Mary, she sees perhaps even deeper than what was revealed to her at the Annunciation, remember the Incarnation, Mary was given a vision of all the suffering Christ would have to endure. Um, perhaps this goes even deeper at Simeon's prophecy, and she knows that no amount of suffering could ever lead her to disrespect God or offend his divine majesty. Of course, this was already fully present in Mary at her very moment of conception. Remember her immaculate conception. Of course, all this was absolutely present. But the fathers, um, the saints of the church, especially the very Marian ones, tell us that she did grow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit her whole life. That doesn't mean they were ever lacking. Everything was always perfectly there. But Mary did grow in the virtues her whole life. And so I tend to think that um, with at the prophecy of Simeon, even in a, in a deeper way, she then knew that no amount of suffering could ever lead her to disrespect God or offend his divine majesty. The second is the flight to Egypt. We're going to look at piety, which is defined as a gift enabling us to venerate and love God and his saints and to preserve a pious and benevolent mind toward our neighbor for the love of God. You know, if you picture Jesus, Mary, and Joseph walking from Israel to Egypt, this homeless family, in some sense they're actually covering a small part of the earth, which is why I line this up with the beatitude, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And you know, I think of Jesus and Mary and Joseph depending on divine providence on that desperate flight to Egypt. And still, they weren't angry at God at all for their difficult circumstances, but they still had, what we hear in the Pope's words today, this pious and benevolent mind to God, yes, even being homeless. Okay, the third, the third sorrow of Mary is the loss of the child Jesus in the temple. I line this up with knowledge, which the Pope defines today as a gift enabling us to estimate created things at their proper worth and to learn how to use them rightly and to direct them to our last end, which is God. I came to the conclusion this kind of overturns envy and this lines up with blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Obviously, Mary was mourning that she lost Jesus in this time. And notice that knowledge is also to put God above all things. So here, Jesus himself puts his father's temple even before, in some sense, even his own mother Mary and foster father Joseph. So knowledge is to seek God above all things and all created things in light of God. Number four, Mary meets Jesus on the way to Calvary. Of course, it should be pretty easy why I line this up with fortitude. I believe this overcomes the concupiscence of sloth. And I line this up with blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because everything... Jesus did his whole life was for righteousness, for his Father's righteousness and to make us holy. And notice that the Pope said, Fortitude is a gift which inspires us with valor and courage to observe faithfully, faithfully the law of God and of the church by conquering all obstacles and all the assaults of our enemies. Now, as you all know, crucifixion was one of the worst tortures ever devised by man. And to endure this, for Jesus to endure crucifixion plus all the sins of the world, we can't just get off easy and say, well, that, that's easy because he was God. In his humanity and in Mary's body and soul, there had to be the very highest levels of fortitude possible. And yes, the crucifixion was due to my sins and your sins. But as far as the primary historical cause, it was, it was really Jesus not compromising with the law of God that made the Pharisees turn on him, which lines up again with why we consider the cross to be a victory in observing faithfully the holy law of God 
and the assaults of our enemies, the very definition that the Pope gave of fortitude today. The fifth sorrow of Mary is the crucifixion. I line this up with counsel. This obviously overturns pride, the great humiliation of a crucifixion overturns pride. And I line this up with the beatitude, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy, because St. Thomas Aquinas says the greatest attribute of God is his mercy, and we see this especially on the cross. Notice the Pope says, counsel is a gift by which amidst the doubts and uncertainties of human life, we are enabled to recognize those things that redound more to God's glory, to our own salvation, and to that of our neighbor. And then I add on top of that that I think of counsel lined up with the crucifixion uh, because by Christ's passion, I often pray that I may, in my own thoughts, in my own words, in my own actions, choose the very best things to bring him glory and for my own salvation. Number six, the sacred heart is pierced or the death of Jesus. This overturns lust. I line this up with blessed the pure in heart for they shall see God. Obviously, at Jesus' death, it was his heart that was opened. This is why I line this up with, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And notice the Pope defines understanding as a gift which facilitates, as far as this is possible to mortal men, the understanding of the truths of faith and of the mysteries of God, which we were unable to know by the natural light of the intellect. That's very similar to the very first paragraph in the Summa, that by philosophy, if you're living a really good life and have a really good brain, you can come to a few truths, but you can never come to the fullness of the Catholic faith without divine revelation. Now, why do I line this up by with lust? Well, in some sense, lust is longing to see inside someone with no sacrifice of marriage. But here, on this sixth star of Mary, we literally look into Christ's own physical heart at the opening of it, and we know this came at the price of his sacrifice for us. Also, understanding is when God gives us insights into the Catholic faith and things that we haven't just read in books, but really infuses into our hearts. And I believe that meditation on the crucifixion is best for that. Again, understanding is a gift which facilitates, as far as this is possible to mortal man, the understanding of the truths of faith and of the mysteries of God, which we are unable to know by the natural light of the intellect. Okay, and then the last star of Mary is the burial of Jesus. Line this up with wisdom. This overturns anger. And I found that this lines up with the beatitude, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Verse 9. The Pope tells us today that wisdom is a gift by which the mind is lifted up from earthly and transitory things, enabling us to contemplate things eternal, that is to say, God himself, the eternal truth, and to relish and love him, in which consists all our good. Okay, why do I line these up with the, uh, the burial of Jesus, where Mary is burying Jesus? Well, I think of how Mary was already forgiving Christ's enemies at his burial and how someone only fully participating in the love of God could do that. Hence the overturning of anger, which she never had, um, at least not any sinful level. But the level of, of God's love that was being lived in her in this level of forgiveness had to be just beyond what maybe we'll even understand in heaven since for a parent to bury their own kid who was killed, and in some sense at the human level, I'm not necessarily applying this to Jesus and Mary, but at the human level, would take more than even the person who died, right? So notice, though, that uh, wisdom isn't knowing cool catechism facts, but it's where we become united to God in love, by love, and through love. Now, of course, at that level, we wouldn't deny, you know, if we were really that united with God as a saint, of course, we wouldn't deny anything in the catechisms, the old school catechisms are, of course, 100% true, and all the, all the old saints would never deny anything in the old catechism. So I'm not, I'm not saying that truth is opposed to love at all. But I am saying that the Holy Ghost gift of wisdom is when the soul actually tastes and knows God by the likeness of love more than the intellect. You see why this is a gift? There's no amount of books we can read to get there. It is a gift that was given to us at our baptism, increased at confirmation, and increases even more through the ascetical life, which is fasting and other acts of um, sacrifice. Well, Mary had this gift of wisdom her whole life, of course, but as her son was now dead for three days in this burial, she must now be at a new level of the Holy Ghost's gift of wisdom. As I said before, Mary was always at the maximum, but still growing in all of these virtues. Again, wisdom, the Pope says, is a gift by which the mind is lifted up from earthly and transitory things, 
enabling us to, con to contemplate things eternal, that is to say, God himself, the eternal truth, and to relish and love him, in which consists all our good. Please say an Our Father for me, et benedictio Dei omnipotentis, Patris et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti, descendit super vos, et maniat semper. Amen.